Let's pick out some pretty lures. Uh, this one. I don't want to be like Mr. Dork Safety Guy. What's in your bait freezer? What's going on, Dar Sizzle Nation? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dar Sizzle. Oh, and I'm Brian, the boyfriend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you guys are not going to like me a lot in this episode, unfortunately. And uh, Brian has not liked me for like over a week now. I'm mad. And the reason being is because I have been so freaking busy tying bracelets and making calendars and sending orders out for you guys before the holidays and Christmas that, that we I can't have, make videos. I literally have no time to make content, make awesome videos for you guys. So I have not fished in about a week now. So I really apologize, but today I promise is my last day, and I'm back to the normal schedule after this video. So. So today, you guys have been asking a lot about like how to get ready for fishing and this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna do that today because I'm literally getting ready to go fishing tomorrow. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm gonna be all caught up by the end of this video, so we should be good to go and I'll be back to a normal routine. All right, so enjoy. I'm gonna get started with the weather. So first I'm gonna go to my uh, Noah Palm Beach forecast. That's very simple. Tonight, east winds, five to 10 knots. Tuesday, east, southeast. So it looks like a consistent to the east. Now let's look at what's actually been going on. And here's the local station. And I can see it's south, southeast, right now at eight. And I look down here, I like to look at the history. And this history goes back, uh, you know, about three days, I think. And you can see, like on the 17th, uh, which was yesterday, you know, it was north at night. Well, yesterday it was east, and then at night it was north. And then we come up here and it was west in the morning. And it was west for a lot of the morning, west. Then it went around the south. And now it looks like it's coming around the east and tomorrow's supposed to be right out of the east. So it's, it's kind of all over the place, which is not the best, um, you know, but whatever. Uh, let me just take a quick look at that forecast again, because I already forgot. So east winds, five to ten knots. That's that's pretty easy seas. You know, we can pretty much do anything that. Not enough to kite fish, so I'm not going to get ready for kite fishing right now. And uh, so it looks like some bump trolling, and we can also troll. So those are two techniques I think we're going to focus on. Um, if the wind was coming out of the east more, you know, for a longer period of time, I'd be a little happier. All right, so let's talk about winds. East wind co is coming this way. All right. Uh, come from Bahamas towards the state, from the east, okay? So that pushes everything towards us, towards the shore, the bait, the fish, everything. So you're gonna fish closer to shore, typically, and, you know, catch fish around here. Now, opposite, a west wind. It's going, pushing out, away from the shore, right? That pushes all the bait and everything out into the ocean, okay? So everything is more spread out. That means we have less likely gonna catch a fish uh, drifting a live bait close to shore and more likely to be trolling around trying to find where the heck the fish are. Okay, so that's bad. Uh, north wind coming usually comes down <laughs> from the north, the northeast. That's typically going to push some swells our way and is really great for fishing, but also makes it rougher. All right, coming from the south or the southeast, that's our prevailing winds in the in the uh, summer, and you know it's good for fishing. Uh, it's you know not the best. Uh, but uh, you know, that's pretty typical of the summer and you're gonna, you know, again, it's pushing stuff towards the shore So it's great when it starts to go really south, you know, the fishing is sometimes not that awesome uh, But but whatever mostly you want to have an east wind for the best fishing and the northeast wind here pushing everything uh, Into shore. So that's the gist of it. All right now normally I look at the tides and the moon phase and all that kind of stuff but you know Reality of things are is that you go fishing when you can go fishing and tomorrow is one of those days for us So we're going fishing in the morning then we're gonna point me at noon to meet a bunch of kids, which is really awesome. So, uh, you know, it doesn't even matter, I'm gonna be fishing out there, but typically uh, inshore, if you're fishing, you wanna have some current running and, and try and coincide your fishing with those moon phases, minors and majors, and see what happens. Uh, let's get some poles out. All right, so this is my garage. Listen, I don't wanna hear anything about it. I got Darcy's dad living here, and y'all know he's sick. And I got Darcy's uh, brother, who's in the Marines. Hurrah. And so my garage is messy because I have all their stuff in it, all right? So I don't want to hear any crap from the uh, peanut gallery. All right, so at this point, I want to, I, what I like to do is get ready to fish. I like to be ready to fish as soon as I get out there. And so I am expecting, well, the plan is plan A, you got to have a plan B. Plan A is the live bait. And I'm, I know I want to have four rods ready to go immediately. All right. So here's my down rods. I'm going to have two down 
and two on the surface. Everything under, that goes underwater here in Florida, you gotta have wire on because something's gonna cut it off, all right? So this is a standard Kingfish rig. Uh, we got an accurate reel. This is 30 pound uh, pink Andy, I believe. And, and that goes to uh, 30 pound fluorocarbon, about 10 feet, that's right here. And then that's gonna go to a number four wire. Now I am always tackling down, trying to get the bites. Uh, some guys are going to tell you to use heavier, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of pressure here in South Florida, and the water is clear. So, I mean, I'm always tackling down. I got this little duster on here. You can use a duster or not. And that's going to go down to a kingfish rig, okay? I use very small hooks. Kingfish have very good eyes and sailfish and everything else. So that's a, like a number one uh, or one of mustad J hook down to a little treble, okay? So that's some of my uh, bottom line when I'm bump trolling or slow trolling live baits in which... Again, is what I initially expect to do tomorrow. So I'm going to set up this rod the same exact way right now. Okay, just to confirm those sizes, this is a 1.0 Mustad hook, uh, J hook, and you're right. I was right. That's the number. That's actually number four size treble hook, and I'm using uh, number four wire here. And uh, I'm going to do this real quick. Caught something, nothing is ever easy, right guys? That's when Darcy leaves her cast nets laying around. All right, so that one's all set up. You see, I got my uh, kingfish rig all ready. So I got, that's two ready. All right, so I got my two rods down. Now I got to get uh, some top rods. And I'm going to use these spinners because, uh, you know, we have a small boat and, you know, we don't have a lot of room on a small boat. So you got to double duty poles. So this is going to double duty as a pitch bait rod in case a fish comes up to the boat, like a mahi, and also as a, uh, trolling rod for a live bait. So I'm just gonna put a um, circle hook on here and I'm gonna use 40 pound fluoro to the hook. Uh, you know, I used 30 pound on the other rod, but that was too um, a wire trace. So, you know, the leader was a wire leader and we're gonna use 40 over here. If I can find Darcy's 40. All right, can't find any 40 pound fluorocarbon. This is our semi-tackle room. This is a big mustad bag we got, it's beautiful. It's really nice. See? Awesome. Anyway, these are 40, 80, 80, 80, 60, 60, 60, sizzle. Oh, huh, there we go. Tough line. I had previously tied a bimini on here because I was getting fancy. And uh, so now I'm just going to tie a uh, uni uni on here. It's a three turn uni on both sides. Okay. Okay, now we're going to put a. I'm going to put a 4 0 mustad circle hook on here. Now these are my top lines that I mentioned before. I'm not sure how big these baits are going to be. All right, so I'm going to put a I'm going to put a 4 0 hook on here. This is a a fine wire hook is a small hook it's a light duty hook uh, but i've been getting a lot of pilchards they've been smaller so um, i don't know we're gonna start i can always change it on the boat but it really was set up to go right here i always snail my circle hook so uh, i'll do that real quick we have videos on this all right here we go ready do the eye loop it over okay once around and i hold it here one two three four five six six or seven Stick it through there, through there, you see that? And then I'm gonna, I gotta put my mouth to do it right, so you're not gonna see it, but I basically pull it up like this. See, and then at the end, I'm gonna lick it right now. And then you can pull it tight. See, beautiful, and we'll trim the ends. And trim my uni now. Okay guys, so I just set up the Saragoza with a, a circle hook for live baiting. This is a Darcy snook rod, but I, again, we have a small boat. I'm gonna double duty it as my short uh, live bait rod, all right, when I'm trolling. So, short on top, long on top, two rods with kingfish rigs for the bottom. This one is gonna be one of my trolling rods probably, but right now I got it set up with an extra stinger rig 
in case one of these gets messed up, I can throw this one out right away while the bait's out, all right? Very important to have a backup rod, all right? Now, if the, we like to have a backup plan, right? Backup plan is trolling. I hate trolling, but if we have to do it, we gotta do it. We're gonna have these two rods all set up and ready. They have clips on it to put lures on, all right? Or, or dead baits. This one, again, is gonna be a crossover. This is an extra. And then this is gonna be my deep rod right here, right? Um, and right now I got this on it. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> but uh, again, we're pretty easy right now. We're ready to switch over really quick if we have to. This is Darcy's bottom rod. All right, coming over, let's check the bait freezer. We gotta make sure we have our bait. Now I gotta, you can't do this unless you have a girlfriend who fishes. Back the truck right up to the bait freezer. Kapow, all right? We got ice. We got Darcy's dead fish. What's in your bait freezer? We got a lot of chum. I'm gonna take at least two things of chum tomorrow. Right now I'm looking for ballyhoo. Oh, here we go, right here. Look, ballyhoo. Uh, these aren't that great, they aren't fresh, but they're rigged. We're gonna use those, what the heck. And I see I got some more down there. So let's put some of this back and I'm gonna show you this. Let's pick out some pretty lures. Uh, this one, and this one, and this one. Let's talk about lures. Woo hoo, everyone's favorite subject, all right. Uh, I'm not exactly sure I'm going to pull tomorrow, but uh, let's talk about deep baits. Deep baits. Easiest way to get down to the water column is one of these lip divers. I don't really, I haven't, didn't use them much. I started using them lately. I really like them. Super easy. Every piece of weed in the ocean gets on them, unfortunately, but they do catch fish. So I'm going to bring this nice purple one, pink. These two, very popular colors down here. This one, everyone tells me to get. It works too, okay? I got a Yurizuri Bonita. I've never caught a fish on it. Everybody else loves them. Eventually, it will catch a fish. All right? Now, if I'm lazy, I'm just gonna pull the lip diver, get it 25 or 30 feet below the surface, okay? If I get fancy, I'm gonna use this rod with a planer. You guys seen planers before, hopefully? Look it up, Google it. I'll do a video on it once, but I use a planer bridle, okay? That means these things attach to the line. They it comes off, and then you can do a wind-on situation with this. It makes it easy to control for only two people in a boat. Uh, but that's another subject altogether, all right? So we're gonna start off with this, maybe use the planer. Other lures, we're gonna use, we can use these down. Um, now let's talk about other lures. Now, the best mahi bait in the world, and one of the best baits is a rig ballyhoo. Only head you need on these things is this little chugger. You don't even need a head if you rig them right, but oftentimes you're gonna put a chugger on here. All you need is this $5 chugger, all right? You do not need this $25 chugger. Just this, the best fisherman in the world just used this thing, it's five bucks. I got these already rigged, they're ready, they look like crap, but they're gonna work, trust me. And so those are good. So these are gonna be some of my baits too. Uh, so I'll probably have two of these out, <laughs> two of those out, two of these out, that's four. And then long, on a way, way back, we call it, in the middle, I'll probably put this, some sort of chain. All right, so that's a squid chain from Ballyhood. And so that works good too. I may also put this out, you know, I don't know, we're going to see, you know, whatever it is. Uh, the most popular lure in the whole wide world is probably this thing, it's called an Islander. Uh, this is a purple and black one, the most popular one down here is the blue and white. I'm sure I lost all my blue and whites. You can also use this thing, pretty fancy. Uh, so that's the gist of it. Um, again, these are my two, when I'm trolling, two top baits. A down bait, uh, maybe the planer on the down, and then that's that thing for the way, way back, all right? I almost forgot, why does everyone like to use ballyhood? Well, it looks like a fish, that's one reason, but also very importantly, is that if a fish hits this thing, it's gonna taste like a piece of plastic or a piece of metal, and the fish is likely not gonna come back and bite it. A lot of times, fish bite, and then they come back and get it. All right, very, very common, especially if they miss it or whatever. With this, they're gonna feel fish, and they're gonna come back and get it. All right, another very important thing is you gotta call your bait guy if you're going offshore, if you're gonna buy bait. Um, I use dynamite, uh, not dynamite, I use Gary down in, uh, in Boyden. You know, he's uh, one of the bait guys down there. Uh, you know, anyway, that's my bait guy. If you want his number, you know, email us and we'll give it to you, but he's in front of the inlet all the time. All right, so now, now I'm basically ready, you know, I'm basically ready to go fishing. You know, I got plan A and I got plan B and I checked the weather and uh, I got my bait guy. I'm gonna go get some sandwiches from Publix and, and bring them and you know, I'm pretty much all set. So I'll be able to get out there and go fishing, not waste a ton of gas and really get to it. Uh, the last thing I want to bring up is, is safety. You know, I don't want to be like Mr. Dork safety guy, but uh, I guess it's important. And uh, as you guys know, we're sponsored by ACR Artec, one of the main companies that makes satellite locator beacons. So if you're, if you're lost at sea, you can press the locator and the Coast Guard will come get you, okay? 
Um, and there's two things, I'll go over real quick. They sell these whole kits now, it's very simple. But it's an EPIRB, that's more like for your boat. If your boat tips over, this gets wet, automatically signals. And then a lot of folks have a, like you see all the time with us, a personal locator beacon or a PLB that goes right with you. Again, uh, if your boat goes anywhere, you know, at a cell phone range or away from shore or you're going hiking, you gotta have that stuff, okay? It's kind of required. Um, so that's really it. I uh, know, sorry the video wasn't that exciting and no Darcy in a bikini or whatever, but uh, you know, also important um, that you get your orders out. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to give you guys a little uh, how-to we get ready to go fishing. So I uh, hope you have a great fishing trip. Maybe you learned a thing or two or maybe comment down below if you have a question or you want to teach me a thing or two. That's no problem too. You all get to learn around here. And uh, until next time, uh, we, how do I say it? Um, follow your dreams and keep on catching.